when my wife, Kitty, and I considered homeschooling back over 12 years ago, we asked ourselves a couple of questions, which we keep asking. One of them is, how do you begin? Where do you start as a concerned mother or father? The second question we ask is, well, once you begin, how do you keep it going? And what do you do once you're started? So I'd like to suggest a couple of concerns that have relationship, I think, to every homeschooler who had a beginning point. And I'd like to also say that it was back in 1826 that a great man by the name of Friedrich Froebel started homeschooling. He also happened to start the international kindergarten movement with his main emphasis, his main concern, was working with parents and helping parents work with their children. Froebel's philosophy, which Kitty, my wife and I, hold dear and work on all the time, is that within the child there is a divine spirit, an essential, beautiful, powerful essence, and that the goal of education is to bring forth that spirit so that the child discovers it and realizes their beauty and their potential, their ability to create harmony and order, their ability to discover, their ability to relate. And in that philosophy, the main theme, the main way of succeeding with that goal for Froebel and for our family is through creative play. See, creative play in early childhood education especially is the safest, most natural context for children. It's the place they feel safe. And even more importantly, once they feel safe, it's the place for them to access their power. In the context of play, they learn to be creative. They learn to make choices. They learn to take objects and create new worlds. They create things that no one's ever seen before. And in that excitement, there's revelry and joy. That's a natural output from appropriate education. The second thing I'd like to suggest is that more currently in the new brain research, we have all of Howard Gardner's work in multiple intelligence, different kinds of intelligence that we all have in various amounts. There's musical intelligence, spatial relationship intelligence, etc. But did you know there's one thing that's common to all of those intelligences that's very important for children to experience and to discover? What is that? That is the child's ability to perceive and understand patterns, whether it be musical patterns, mathematical patterns, movement patterns. Patterns is basic to all forms of intelligence. Now the reason I'm calling attention to that is because in play, children create and discover patterns in their own behavior and in the objects that they explore. So one of the things we're going to do today in a few minutes is see children engaging in open-ended creative play with non-representational materials. Materials that say to the child, make of me what you wish. Create new forms. I'm here to be in relationship with you for your delight and discovery. Typically, blocks, as we know, are a spectacular, open-ended, creative resource for children. There are, of course, many other resources that children love to play with and lead to insight in mathematics, in science, in language literacy, such as sand, or clay, or paint, or sticks. So as a beginning homeschooler, the message I would like to make clear with all of you is that it is very important for us as homeschooling parents to allow time for creative play with 
our children. There is, of course, the need for curriculum. I feel like that is covered adequately. The part that tends to get left out is allowing yourselves, as loving parents, to be with your children, to bond in creative exploration and discovery. In a few minutes, I'm going to show a little process-oriented play that uses blocks and children, my children, of two different ages, a three-and-a-half-year-old and a, a nine-year-old. I'd like to back up and make one other comment before we begin the play, because I think these are things that you may observe in the children's play, and indeed, if you reflect on your own family, perhaps your own way of learning, this is common process that is really good to keep in mind when working with your children. The first point is that in this type of education, which Froebel called self-active education, all learning must be with the whole child involved, the hands, the heart, as well as the mind. So it, it's encouraged that you use objects that entice fingertips. And the main reason, point number one, we must develop in our children the ability for them to focus their attention, to pay attention, to concentrate their energies. If that we do, the next step automatically evolves. And that is that their minds, their imaginations, their creative capacities automatically begin to expand and relate. So therefore, what we want to do is set the stage for them to really begin to think and to imagine. The third step, again, automatically happens. Once the child is focused, once the child begins to imagine and elaborate with their brain power, they begin to make connections automatically to the rest of their life, to all of their relationships. That's how the brain is, is, is asked to work. That's how it functions. So that a child engaged in block play or other open-ended materials, like sand or clay or paint, automatically connects all of their life and the curriculum we're working on in our homes with the learning taking place at that time. Remember the child has within them the power and the ability to understand the experience and to relate it. No one else can do that for our children but them. We're there as guides, coaches, facilitators, companions. The fourth step, which again happens automatically but takes a little longer, the child automatically relates that experience to broader concepts, to life affirming awareness, principles that serve as a guide in their life forever. Remember, if the play curriculum is of this quality, the child makes discoveries. For instance, what a powerful discovery to realize that in play, I can create. That's really important for children to understand and to believe in, not to be told that they have that power, but to experience it and to be certain of it, to have that conviction. The last level, and perhaps you'll see it today in the children's play, is that when they engage in that type of learning, after that experience, there's a sense of control and revelation. Because in this context of creative, constructive play, who's in charge? The child is in charge. So the child is making the choices. Again, a very important thing for our children to be able to do. To construct their own knowledge through their own experience is the context for this creative play to occur. The last element, incidentally, also has that delight and relaxation that occurs in children's play. You must remember when you were boys and girls, or maybe you've observed in your own children, 
you can call their attention and they're somewhere else. They are absorbed in another space. They are within themselves, reveling, understanding in their play. That type of communication is often overlooked. Communication is not always outside. Creative play allows the child to communicate and to understand inward. That's a very, very important gift that arrives spontaneously in play. At this point, what I'd like to do is share a spontaneous experience of play, as I moment mentioned a moment ago, with two children. I have no idea of what's going to happen. I have a beginning point, a little space. I have resources, some blocks. They're going to come, and what's going to happen next? I have no idea. That's part of the excitement of creative play in the home. My role is to be a co-learner, a co-creator with the child. I'm not simply a teacher when I work with my children. I'm a learner. And that idea is something we work on all the time in our family, that we learn from our children, and especially in play. So what I'd like to do in just a few moments is play with the children using these blocks. I'm showing you this so you'll have an idea of some of the possibilities. I have no idea if the children will construct items like this or not. We'll just have to wait and see. And part of the delight of this kind of work with children is the surprise that we experience also. There's a foundation upon which this is built that goes beyond Froebel's teaching. And in our current brain research, for instance, Jean Piaget, Jean Piaget said that the goal of education is to create possibilities for children to invent and discover. Let's see if there's any mathematics, if there's any language development, if there's any investigation or science that occurs as we observe these children in play. My object with this little play experience is to be present in the life of my children and to observe with them, perhaps to interact with them to see what they do. What are you guys doing? What? Making a circle. Making a circle. Making my train goes. Making your train goes? Uh, well, my train track. Oh, I love it. I see the train track. Hmm. Mm. I didn't know you could make a circle with rectangles. That's very nice, Elijah John. This is a train track. Uh-huh. And Sarita? A tower. Where are the big ones? Oh, well, maybe there's a couple in there. What's that over there? Let's see if we can discover what else is in there. Good. I see some big ones coming. Mm hmm. What about those over here? Oh, let's see. I'm going to stretch and see. I see them. Look at those. They are big ones, aren't they? Come on, come on. You want to get them out? Can you get them out? Let's see if we can get them out. Huh. Okay, there. Ah, come on. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Sarita. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put this okay if I put this one in here? Can I put that one in there? No. Okay. You want me to put that in there? I put them over here, okay? Mm-hmm. What is here? Okay. I'm gonna put that there. I'm going to put that there. These <sighs> big ones. OK. But they're on the outside edge. Well, let's go over to the edge. You want to put some of these over there? I want to circle this way. OK. With these here? Yeah. Can we come over to your side, Sarita? OK. OK. You know what I'm seeing? Yeah. I'm seeing two circles. Yeah, well. Huh? This one? Yeah. OK. You have some trains? Yeah. Okay, let's go get them. Wow. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh, those were Elijah's, weren't they? Oh, good. Bring them around here. I need some more books, Dad. 
Okay, well, I have some more here. Okay. Is it okay if I let you guys play a little bit and I come back in a minute? I just have a little something that I need to do, okay? I'm gonna just put these here. I'll be right back, okay? I just wanna stand up and relate some observations that I'm making. If we had the opportunity, maybe you could share some of your observations, but first thing that struck me was Elijah's ability to begin to make a pattern and to relate it to something as near and dear to his heart. Can you guess what they are? Little trains. That's real community building concept, in my opinion, as well as geometric shapes and quantity. We haven't talked about how many blocks yet, but it's a question I could certainly pose. But if I do, it may draw the child to my agenda, to my questions, rather, to their play. And what Sarita's doing is obviously something. A tower. A tower. Oh, yes. You want to make a tower too? Okay. So he can make observations of other children in play and relate and interact and bond with that play experience. I feel like this is real important in terms of social development. Social emotional development happens spontaneously in their play. Well, let's see what we got. Uh oh. Oh man. Oh man. We may have to make some adjustments. Sometimes we don't have all the resources we want. So what can we do about that? Make an airplane spaceship. Make an airplane spaceship? Yeah, I don't try that one. Okay. Ooh, look at that, a new pattern. You, you made it for me. I make that for you? Like, a big one for. Okay. This way? Yeah. All right. What are you doing over there, Sarita? Making a tower. Taking a tower? Make Step, 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 step. Oh, yes. Step, step, steps. Good. Yeah, I need more. How about if I give those to you? No, I need more, Dad. Okay. You like it? Yeah. Okay. We'll just bring them over here. Did you decide to take your tower down? Do you have another idea in mind? Or you just you, f you have another idea in mind? I got one, Dad. Okay. I wonder how many we have here. Boy, Five, that's... six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fantastic. That's a bunch. Yeah. Did you carry it all? Uh-huh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. I wonder how many fingers you have. How many fingers do you have? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, good. Okay. We're working on that concept of numbers through this play we can I, see. I, 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 I play my own play animal here. You want to play animal here? Yeah. Elmo. Oh, Elmo. You, we, didn't, we don't have Elmo here, do we? Yes, we do. We do have Elmo? Ooh. Where is Elmo? Uh, I, I have Elmo play animal here. Okay, well, I, I think we could do that in a little bit, but I have a question I'd like to ask you. What? Um, is this the way you would like it? Yeah. Okay, is there anything you want to add or take away? Put my own to my airplane. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put these in here like this, okay? Okay. All right. Well. Take my airplane. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, airport, huh? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, fly. How does the plane fly? Yes. Good, yeah. And how does the plane land? Right there. Good. Goat. Goat mm -hmm. on that floor. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I'm playing. That was it. That was it. That was it. 
Oh, that's the logo block. That's a picture of Dr. Drew on the block. Believe it or not. Little discoveries excite us to continue and lead us in new directions. Well, Elijah got it first. This is a moment for me uh, thinking about moral what, what, development. What if he discovers it, can she take it? And, you know, our children find ways of learning these things naturally in their play. And moral development Dad, is very important in these times. Elmo at church. Hmm? Elmo at church. You have, you have Elmo at church? Yeah. Well, you want to bring Elmo to church? Yeah. You want to bring him to church? Yeah. Okay. Play it. Okay. That's a lovely tower, sweetheart. Yeah, Carefully I'm balancing it, huh? Tower? I'm going to make it. Uh, Dad? I'm, uh. I want to see you. As I was about to say a moment ago, not always sure when to enter into the, the, yeah. the play with the children. Sometimes I feel like I. I need to step back and be quiet and, and let them continue. But I need more space. Need more space? Yeah. Well, how about if we just go right off the table? We could just come right down here and go that way. Yeah, I'll push it. Okay, let's push it. Ooh, <laughs> that looks like fun. Ah. He's here? Okay. I, uh, I think what I'd like to do at this point, given this is a live play experience, is step back a little bit, if I may, and you children go ahead and play a little bit. Oh, Sarita, would you and Elijah just go ahead while I go over here for a minute? And, uh, you know, I just realized that it's fun to do this. Sometimes yeah. I have to do it myself in a Thank different you. way. Yeah, help you. Look at that. Okay. I need to make I just want to try something, okay? Can I try one thing? Yeah. I just want to try to make five. One, two, three, four, five. Can you make that many? This many. Yeah, I think we're still in the airplane playing and not really concerned about five. Oh, this is a house. Yes. Spaceship. Oops. Da! What happens now? Fall down. Yes. <sighs> what was going on here? What did you see? What learning is taking place? How do you feel? How do I feel? How do these children feel? What did they learn? What Wait. meaning does it have? Wait. While the children were going out, I had a few moments to ask the audience what they observed, and there was a couple of very succinct sharing, which maybe you observed in the presentation of the children. One thing was that there was mathematics, uh, lots of different mathematics. For instance, addition and subtraction for that little boy, adding a block and taking a block away is a concrete experience of mathematics. And going back to Froebel, the more hands-on, interactive, sensory-oriented the learning experience is, the more they're going to love math and the more they're going to learn. And they're going to feel like they can learn from that experience. Did you notice the excitement of the children? At least of Elijah. Sarita was more reserved. She was more concentrated, really in building an elaborate structure, very complex pattern by contrast to Elijah's, that involved physics. One of the audience mentioned that there was a lot of physics going on in the finding the point of balance and symmetry. All of that physically, concretely expressed in the block play is very helpful for young children. In fact, it's the best way for them to understand those more abstract principles later on. I also mentioned that there was moral development opportunities to talk about how to behave when someone else has something you want and what you need to do when you can't have it, or how to address limitations in the resources you have. What do you do if you don't have enough blocks? How to share? 
These are important concepts that children only learn through direct experience, not through our words as caregiving parents. There's another part of the learning which I feel is critical and is expressed certainly in Elijah's spontaneous expression. And that is a combination of his ability to express himself verbally and physically is related to his self-esteem. So when our children are actively engaged in play, like he was, you can fairly well assume that they're feeling comfortable, they feel accepted, they feel creative, they feel good about themselves. That brings us back to Froebel. In his behavior, Elijah illustrated the capacity to create harmony and order. When he drew those blocks, when he placed those blocks into a circle as part of a train track, it said that he understood the concept of shape or form, or at least he's beginning to find a way to represent his understanding. In conclusion, I would like to read a little quote from Froebel out of that book I showed you earlier, which I believe expresses what our family of homeschoolers feel our goal is in education and in our family. And it is a direct quote from Froebel. By education, then, the divine essence of man should be unfolded, brought out, lifted into consciousness, and man himself raised into free conscious obedience to the divine principle that lives in him and to a free representation of this principle in his life. Within the child, is an awesome power, a creative spirit, which is precious and divine. Creative play allows them to experience that using open-ended materials such as blocks. Thank you. Time seems to fly, oh, the years pass so quickly now, like sand through your fingers, you hold it once, and then it's gone. The chill.